What's up guys, it is Derek from DaysDesigns.com bringing you another YouTube tutorial. Let's get to the video. Alright, so in this video, I'm going to be bringing you guys an Adobe Illustrator tutorial, bringing you the basics of the pen tool. <clears throat> I'll be going over the main tools within the pen tool itself. Also, I'll be giving you guys my three main techniques that I've learned over the years, over the time from online courses, illustrator courses, illustration courses, logo courses, so on and so forth for creating um, you know, better, better illustrations, designs, and so on and so forth when using the pen tool itself. So let's get started. So basically the pen tool is um, a tool that you can use to create lines and shapes and so on and so forth. And it's based off of you know using anchor points to make those shapes and so on and so forth. So to get to the pen tool, you can simply use the keyboard shortcut of pushing the P key on your keyboard. So just push that on your keyboard and then you will have the <clears throat> the uh, pen tool. You can also go right up here and click the pen tool and it'll also show you guys the keyboard shortcut again, which is simply pushing the P key. So, <laughs> all right, so, you know, when you're using the pen tool, like I said, it's basically making anchor points to create shapes, outlines, so on and so forth. So after that, we also have the add anchor point key. And to use this key, you simply push the plus sign on your keyboard and you'll notice it just switched over and you can add anchor points to your shapes, um, lines, paths, so on and so forth. Awesome. All right. So after that one, we have the delete anchor point. Now the delete anchor point key. So to get to this this tool, you can simply push the minus or the subtract key on your keyboard and you'll see it just switched over again. And now we can delete some of the anchor points that we don't need. So if you guys are making a shape and there's too many, or if you're combining a shape, sometimes whenever you combine shapes and paths, Illustrator will give you way too many um, paths that you don't, or anchor points that you don't need and that are just unnecessary. Um, you can just subtract them. That was, that did not work out. Okay, so, and lastly, we have the, uh, we have the anchor point tool. So, is it not working? Okay, so to get to this tool, this is the last tool for the pen tool, um, you simply hold down shift key on your keyboard and then push C. You'll notice it just switched over. So it was, um, it was on whatever it was recently on. And then when I switched it, it goes to this point right here. So. What this tool basically does, you can adjust, rotate, add, and subtract um, handles and create bezier curves um, on individual anchor points. So as you guys can see, I just uh, put a square on our artboard, turned it to the right. You'll see why in a second. So we have four anchor points, and I'm going to turn this into a circle or my best representation of a circle. So again, control C on your keyboard, and then hold, <clears throat> hold the anchor point with your mouse click and drag and then if you hold shift you can this pretty much locks everything at a 45 degree angle so right now it's 180 then we go 45 again and it goes all the way around as long as you're holding the shift key if you let go it looks like a dancing person or like a spinning windmill or something who knows <laughs> so anyways you want to turn this diamond or square into a circle you would just click and drag on each one and this is how you create your bezier curves and the handles so that's a pretty decent circle we have here make it a little bit smaller okay and I'm also going to turn this again to the side okay so um, another thing you can do with this uh, with the anchor point tool again hold down shift on your keyboard and push C uh, whenever you have your oh, okay that's not right um, our anchor points okay they're actually in the right place so again um, now that we created our bezier curves and our handles we can also get rid of them by again hold shift and then push down c and if you click on the anchor point it has um, the handles on it you can simply get rid of them you can also um, get rid of one uh, each one at a time simply by clicking on the handle itself um, or you could just again click on the whole anchor point and that's pretty much the basics of the of the anchor point or sorry, the pen tool. Again, you can just go right up here and here are each individual tools itself. And again, if you do guys do forget the keyboard shortcuts, they're right, they're right next to the tool. Keyboard shortcuts are really, um, you know, a really great thing to be able to remember. And, 
you know, to really just get into your workflow because it makes things a lot easier. You know, whenever I go for a tool, I pretty much use my keyboard shortcuts like V is the uh, pointer or the selection tool, A is the direct selection tool, P for the pen tool, and so on and so forth, a bunch of other ones. Um, yeah, I'll just do an, two more. for To get a square, um, I believe it's the rectangle marquee tool, you just push M on your keyboard. If you hold Shift and Alt, that'll give you a perfect square every time. And the same thing for the ellipse tool, so you push L on your keyboard, and if you hold down Shift and Alt, click and drag, you get a perfect circle. All right, so <clears throat> now that we've gone over those, I'm going to touch on a few of the basics, or, or sorry, my favorite, pretty much um, my favorite tips or my favorite methods and techniques for when, while using the pen tool to create, you know, awesome designs and so on and so forth. So one of those is, is more of a mindset, and uh, it's pretty much a rule of thumb that I've learned and I came across and you know it's always in my workflow now and uh, whenever I'm creating illustrations and using the pen tool specifically so that is really just using the least amount of anchor points possible you know some people use way too many anchor points you know to create this circle you don't need 10 anchor points or even five you know simply four is good enough if you're really good at it and uh, I don't I can't remember if this is the perfect circle or not um, it's completely irrelevant I'll just delete it and make another one all right so Bam, perfect circle. So, okay, so making sure that your anchor, you have the least amount of anchor points as possible. So I'll try to um, give you an example. So say we wanted to illustrate a dragon. So I'm gonna try to, I'm going to try and illustrate the recent dragon that I did. I can't remember what it looks like exactly. Um, I think it goes down like this. All right, so, but, I mean, as you can see, it's kind of hard, it's hard for me to not use it this way. So as you can see, I'm using the least amount of anchor points as possible already, just because I've done it for a while and now I'm, you know, really used to it. And this is pretty much the general shape for the, um, for the dragon I did recently, for the most part. I didn't use the same tool, but that looks like. It looks horrible but anyways so some people will you know create way too many anchor points and um, you know they're just unnecessary so say I wanted to make a hill some I mean you could move this over a bit more just so I have more space somebody's cutting grass at nine o'clock at night what are they doing <laughs> hopefully that doesn't bother you guys anyways um, you know say you wanted to make an S curve the same kind of shape that some people make um, inside of Photoshop you know, you could, you know, some people just use way too many anchor points when trying to make an S curve or something. So if I was to look at the anchor points, there's three, four, five, six. So we could easily simplify this down to a total of one, two, well, one, two, three, four. We could make four, um, probably even less. So I'll click and drag this above and I'll just get rid of the unnecessary anchor points like this one and this one are really unnecessary. Because the other ones, uh, I'll align these. Because these are our main anchor points. Um, you know, it's at the top of our shape, the other one's at the bottom, and the other ones are at the end and the beginning of our shape. So I'll align this one as well. All right, so as you can see, if we make a comparison from the top line, the top S line, my computer's lagging. Um, in comparison to the bottom one. Okay, so if we look at the top one and the bottom one, this one is a lot more smooth. It's a lot more silk and sleek and clean and so on and so forth. It has a lot more flow to it. This one kind of looks like an actual hill or something. So, you know, making sure that you have the least amount of anchor points as possible is, you know, really, really important and it can really help your work out a lot in your designs. I mean, we could even go to this extent as well. But then again, it, it'll it make this too pointy after a certain point, because if I keep going like this, you know, it'll just make it more like a V instead of like a round circle as we had it before. So now it's kind of, it's a lot more round. <clears throat> so yeah, using the least amount of anchor points as possible is my first tip for whenever you're using the pen tool. So whenever you're using uh, the pen tool to create outlines, you can do it this way 
um, you know, say we wanted to make a clock. All right, so we already have one circle. I will turn this the other way around. And then, so, make it bigger. <clears throat> so say we wanted to make a clock, and this will be the outline of it. Um, so yeah, so now I'm gonna set up my rulers just so I know where the dead center is. Make sure our rulers are visible. Always get rid of the other ones, or not. Okay, so we're gonna make a quick clock. Um, so I'm gonna have it pointing on three o'clock. And we're gonna put this on five. Okay, so that's good enough. All right, so now it says three o'clock. So you'll notice that sometimes whenever you're creating these kind of lines individually, say I wanted to, so let's actually, all right, let's do it again. So say I wanted to create an S and using the least amount of anchor points possible. A lot of times people ask me, how do I make my lines um, so clean and, and I don't want to say perfect, but you know, as perfect as possible. And it's mainly because, um, again, I have the least amount of anchor points as possible. And at the same time, both sides of the shape have, oh goodness, this looks horrible. <laughs> both sides of the shape have the same anchor point structure as well as handles. So you'll look right here, <clears throat> the top part of this curve where this anchor point is, and then the bottom part of this curve are almost exactly identical. And why is that? So if I was to get a ruler really quick, you'll notice that they're pretty much aligned, the anchor points in the exact same um, exact same line. And if, if I turn this, um, you know, this way, again, they'd still be on the same line for the most part they're lined up. So that is very important, even if it's on a point, you know, so if I wanted to create something like this, I wouldn't put an anchor point here and then one there because it's not gonna be the same. You have to do the same thing on both sides. So, you know, even with your handles as well for the curves, so this one doesn't have a handle. So if I was to add one, see so right what I, what I did there is hold shift C and that gives me the anchor point tool and then I just click and drag the line and it'll automatically bring out the um, necessary handles. So I'm just going to get rid of this one and I'm going to try, I'm going to try and mimic the same direction and the same um, angle as the one that's on the top side of this line or the shape if you want to call it. So again, if I highlight these two, it'll show these two. For the most part, these are going in the same, they're going in the same direction and for the most part, they're on the same angle. So say if I had one, um, you know, one handle going completely 90 degrees up, um, <coughs> create a rectangle. So if I was to, you know, extend this way, I need to do the exact same thing for the other one. And if the handles are on the exact same line, it'll be perfect. Like it looks kind of like a bullet at this point. It's not what I was trying to make, but Hopefully you guys get the point. And um, if I was to bring this one down more, you'll notice that it becomes slanted. Kind of this side is higher because this handle is higher and this side is lower because this side, this handle is lower. So if they're the same on both sides, the shape will be the same on both sides. So hopefully um, that really helps you guys understand that. That, um, you know, that clears things up for you guys um, a little bit. And hopefully you guys can take a few things away from that. Kind of got a weird face looking here. But anyways, um, the last thing I'd like to go over touches back onto the theory of the clock. <laughs> the theory, clock theory for graphic design 101. All right, so, um, you know, this is a technique I picked up from, um, I can't remember his name. I think it's Von Glitschka. Uh, sorry if you're listening and uh, I butchered your last name. Um, but anyways, as the technique of using the clock for reference when creating circle shapes and as well as you know just round shapes in general so you'll notice when i created this one this s curve i put one for the most part this one is at a nine o'clock we have 12 six and then three so if you look at a clock this is three o'clock at the moment a.m p.m no matter so we have 12 o'clock right here three six nine and twelve again so the main reason for this is because if you look at a perfect circle, if you get the ellipse tool and then look at the anchor points, they are at, you know, 
12, 3, 6, and 9. So replicating this or doing the same thing in your own designs or your custom shapes, and if you want them to be, you know, like a perfect circle, if you wanted to create a perfect circle or or even just like a perfect oval or something like that. This one's going to go off the page here. That's unfortunate. So um, I'm going to put one here, here. It's kind of like a worm or something. But this one looks really bad right now. <laughs> so try to move these. So this one needs to be bumped over some more. So making sure that your anchor points are lined up uh, for the most part perfectly and that your handles are really important as well. So if you want to make a curve you know, as round as possible, making sure that your your anchor points are in great uh, are in a great spot. Move this down because you can see it easier if it's lime green or dark gray. So you know, just making sure your handles are equal on both sides also helps this circle, um, you know. As perfect as possible so again just just in summary you know uh, the three main techniques that I use in my designs is using the least amount of anchor points as possible especially when it's on circular shapes circles ovals um, curved shapes in general um, as well as you know making sure that the um, the anchor points and the bezier curves and handles are uh, very similar on both sides or for the most part they are exactly the same like if you look at these again they're pointing in the same direction the same angle and, um, you know, that also helps with your width, making sure everything is the same. For the most part, this is equal comparison if to this line was here, you see. And I, even if I did make this one shorter and then this one longer, it's still not the same comparison to how it previously was. So that's step no or, um, tip number two. And then tip number three, again, is using the clock method for any circular shapes, you know, whether it's an S or a circle or a sphere, so on and so forth. So yeah, guys, these are the basics of the pen tool. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, the YouTube tutorial. If you guys would like to see more stuff like this in the future, feel free to leave a comment in the section below. Also, I wanted to thank all of you guys for your amazing support. I'm at 1,000 subscribers. One small step for a man. <laughs> Just kidding. But anyways, you know, I appreciate all of the likes, all of the comments, all of the feedback. You know the shares on facebook that some of you do you know i appreciate it so much you know i hit a thousand a lot faster than i thought and um you know hopefully that you guys are here now hopefully you you know you'll be able to stick around when i reach ten thousand hundred thousand hundred thousand and so on and so forth again thank you guys so much i appreciate it hope you enjoyed the video hopefully it was helpful for you guys hopefully you can apply this to your process and you know you learned a few things you know if you did Feel free to let me know in the comment section below. If it wasn't good enough, let me know in the comment section below. But yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next video. Take care.